questions. I do want you to get your reaction to the WHO comments there, certainly raising the alarm about the state of infections on the continent. How concerned are you? Good day, Robin, and uh, good day to all of the viewers. I'm deeply, deeply concerned. When one looks at the situation globally, there are about 20 vaccinations per 100 people in the world. In Africa, it's tenfold less. We have just over two vaccinations per 100 uh, people living on the continent. So our vaccination rates are really way, way too low. And the challenge right now in Africa is that many countries are all ready and raring to go to give vaccinations but there are no doses available. The big problem has been that most countries in Africa have depended on COVAX, and COVAX was getting its main supply from India, from, a, from the Serum Institute of India, that has stopped supplying vaccines because they are redirecting it to India itself. So you can see it's a huge challenge in Africa. So how, how much of a backlog do you think there is there? Well, We've got a lot of catching up to do. There's a need to get vaccines into the continent to bring that up so that at least 20% of our population can be vaccinated you know, within the next few months. Because in many countries in Africa, roughly one out of four countries, about 14 in Africa, already in the third wave. So the sooner the vaccines can arrive, the better. So I was very pleased that the G7 has made that commitment and several companies are also now making commitments to make vaccines available, but a lot more needs to be done. Uh, let's talk about uh, where you are now, South Africa, of course, it's also my home country. Uh, I, it, it should have one of the continent's most developed health systems, but I'm hearing that it's difficult to find beds in places like Johannesburg. How worrying is the situation in South Africa right now? So South Africa went through a pretty bad patch in the second wave. The second wave started rising at the end of November, driven principally by a new variant called the beta variant. And that went through the country and the second wave was much worse than the first wave. And so much of the country has recovered from that second wave in January, and we've spent the last three months at low transmission. However, the situation has changed. Over the last three weeks, cases have been rising in three or four of our nine provinces, and in the economic heartland of Gauteng, where Johannesburg and Pretoria are, the cases have been rising rapidly. As of today, the cases, the seven-day moving average of cases in Gauteng is now higher in the third wave than it's ever been in the first and second waves. Yeah, and that certainly doesn't bode well for hospital beds, but also oxygen. How concerned are you that oxygen supplies will be limited, will run out? How, have you prevent, how are you trying to prevent what happened in India? So South Africa has been in a, in a different situation with regards to oxygen. Because <clears throat> we flattened the curve due to quite severe restrictions uh, in the first wave, we had a period of around eight to 10 weeks to prepare for the first wave. And we used that time to address the issue of oxygen. Because when we did the calculations, it showed quite clearly that we did not have enough oxygen for our surge. And so we brought together uh, an NGO called Right to Care together with Deloitte and the Department of Health, brought the four companies that make oxygen, that make the most oxygen in our country together. That's not easy to do because that's prohibited. And so we had to get special permission from the competition commission for them to come together and do the planning to ensure that every hospital would have adequate oxygen. And so right now, we are in a situation where we generally do not have a problem with oxygen supply. Uh, you know, with minor variations depending on some, uh, you know, rural hospitals where they're dependent on cylinders. But most of the hospitals do not have a problem with oxygen supply. Our problem now is beds. And Gauteng is going through that phase of the surge where beds are in short supply. And I'm not sure if the field hospitals are going to be adequate. So right now, 
there are a few beds available and if the cases continue to rise as they are we might f find that we might have to clear hospitals of other patients in order to make more space for COVID-19 patients. How concerned are you as the vaccines are uh, given to South Africans and there certainly are a number of people over the age of 60 who have been getting it, teachers are next, uh, I understand. How concerned are you about misinformation, about conspiracies, about crackpot Facebook pseudoscience that is perhaps dissuading people from getting the vaccine or getting the second vaccine and creating even more anxiety? Yes, yeah, so South Africa has planned its vaccine rollout in different phases. The phase one was to give vaccinations to healthcare workers, and that has largely been done. There's still a proportion of healthcare workers who are not front facing. In other words, they don't face patients that still have to be vaccinated, but the vast majority have been done. And in fact, we're already reaping those benefits in our first and second waves. By now, a lot of uh, hospital staff would be at home infected or exposed, but right now, because of vaccinations, that problem doesn't really exist. This phase two has been to give out to the elderly, and the next would be to give it to those in congregate settings or at high risk, like teachers and prison warders and so on. Our situation right now is that we have people clamoring for vaccines. There's a big demand for vaccines. But we know that as we get to higher levels of vaccine coverage, we're likely to hit this wall of vaccine denialism, vaccine hesitancy. There have been several studies that have been undertaken in South Africa. It's overall, it's estimated that somewhere between 10 and 15 percent, one of the biggest studies pinned that at around 12 percent of South Africans who are anti-vax. So they will, you know, they just, they just you know, follow social media and just will not take vaccines. But we have about another 15 to 20 percent that are not uh, anti-vax, they're just hesitant because they don't know. They're concerned, is it safe? Is it, you know, I'm asthmatic, should I take it? So there's a lot of those kinds of concerns and those can mostly be addressed. The rest of the South Africans, just over 70%, have, you know, are enthusiastic and will take their vaccine. So that's where we stand right now for us. Vaccine hesitancy is a, is a problem in the distance, but one that we are already preparing for. Okay, thank you very, very much uh, as this third wave uh, continues to spread. Salim Abdul Karim, thank you very much, doctor, for joining us.